In the last video, we looked at adding some basic content into our presentation. In this video, we're going to look at adding some other types of content. One of the ways Beamer lets us display information on slides is using blocks. To do this, we use the block environment. At the end of the begin command, we simply enter the block's title in curly brackets. Then whatever we enter between the begin and end commands forms the content of the block. There are quite a few variations of the block environment that help us produce blocks for different purposes. The first is the alert block environment, which is similar to the block environment, except its colour is red instead of blue. Then there's the definition environment, which produces a standard blue block, but with the title already specified as definition. Next there's the example environment, which produces a green block with the title example. There are also a group of blocks that are especially useful for presenting mathematics. For example, the theorem environment, the corollary environment, and the proof environment. The theorem and corollary environments automatically put their content in italics. These two also allow us to add extra content to the block title in parentheses by adding text into square brackets at the end of the begin command. It's worth mentioning at this point that Beamer automatically loads the AMS math package so you can add more complicated mathematics straight away. Now let's talk about adding code into slides. This is particularly important for any computer science related presentation. To do this we use the semi-verbatim environment. In order to use this environment on a frame we need to add in the fragile option into the begin frame command. Now whatever text we enter in the environment will appear as written except for the backslash, open curly brackets and close curly bracket characters which will continue to behave as they would normally in LaTeX. Therefore if we want to print some code which includes these characters we need to add an extra backslash before each of them. Here's an example printing the code we used for the title slide. Finally, I want to discuss adding hyperlinks to our presentation. Before we can create a hyperlink, we need to tag the frames we want to link to using the label command. For example, we'll add a label to the contents frame, the columns frame, and the pictures frame. Then we use the hyperlink command to insert a link. In the first set of curly brackets, we enter the label of the target frame, and in the second set we enter the text that we want to be clickable. Now if we compile the document, you'll see the text is now a clickable link. Beamer also allows us to use buttons. To do this, we simply add a button command into the second set of curly brackets. For example, we'll swap the click here text for the Beamer button command and enter in curly brackets the text we want to appear on the button. Here are some other button commands we can use. The Beamer go to button, the Beamer skip button, and the Beamer return button. This concludes our second discussion on adding content to our presentation. In the next video, we'll look at animating our presentations. Please do subscribe to our channel by clicking the on-screen link and keep in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter and Google+.